Newsflash, folks, the planet's on fire. Did you not get the memo? You could be forgiven for not noticing, given the fact that we've had one of the coldest Julys anyone can remember. I went swimming the other day and the low temperatures saw me do an uncanny impersonation of a Greek statue. Clearly, there are parts of the world seeing very high temperatures at the moment. Billions of crops have perished. Forest fires run amok and daily life as a result of climactic conditions are a nightmare for millions. But forgive me for raising an eyebrow at the media hysteria around what is proving to simply be a very hot summer in a few places. But the usual suspects, the climate grifters, can't resist rolling out those ludicrous red maps which are making me see red. Because notwithstanding my concerns about the state of the planet and rising temperatures, this whole thing feels overcooked. No pun intended. It feels patronising, it feels manipulative, and it feels like an agenda. It feels like Covid the sequel. And having suffered three years of hysteria about a nasty virus, but one non-fatal for most, forgive me for pushing back on the messaging around this new crisis which has worrying echoes of the pandemic. Just like Covid, you're not allowed to debate the science around global warming and you're not allowed to debate the policies by which it will be tackled. Just like Covid, if you question anything, you're a bad person. Just shut up and enjoy your 15-minute city, your heat pump boiler that doesn't work, your electric bicycle and your plant-based dinner. Just like Covid, it's huge multi-billion dollar corporations who apparently, miraculously, have the answer. Just like Covid, only an authoritarian government can protect you from certain death. Just like Covid, the government-sponsored nudge units and behavioural scientists are terrifying us all over again, this time with the idea that the planet will have blown up by next Tuesday. Just like Covid, establishment media are happy to fan the flames and ram the doomsday narrative down your throat, even if the facts get in the way of a good story. Take a look at this from Sky News, reporting on a car that had exploded in Los Angeles as California is, and I quote, hit by a blistering heat wave. They go on to add it's not clear if the accident was heat related. It doesn't matter, does it? They've planted the seed. Roasting temperatures, that is the clear hint. Well, I'm no meteorologist, folks, but this tweet went out on Tuesday. So I decided to screenshot the weather for that day in Los Angeles via the excellent Met Office app. Here's what I found. The top temperature in Los Angeles, remember, stifling heat wave, 29 degrees. Not exactly the Sahara Desert, is it? Then I thought maybe it's Southern California where temperatures have really spiked. So I headed down to Santa Barbara where it was a scorching, blistering, oh, 29 degrees. That's positively fresh for July. I'd pack an extra layer if I were you. Now, I'm no climate change denier. I am concerned about rising temperatures and pollution, which is why I detested those disgusting, worthless face rags that we were forced to wear during COVID. And I think the world should act to clean up the environments and get those emissions down. On this show, I've unveiled my own bold idea, Smart Net Zero, or Smart Zero for short, in which we take action, but with the will of the people, evidence-based science, a full cost-benefit analysis, and the economy at the heart of any measures. In other words, learning from the mistakes of the pandemic. But climate hysteria proves we have learned nothing. Perhaps that's intentional, who knows? With the apocalyptic headlines, with the fear-mongering, and with the end of the world is nigh narrative, the so-called climate emergency promises to be a hundred times worse than the COVID overreaction. Expect a land grab of our rights and freedoms. Expect economic damage, all for the greater good, of course. Expect the crushing of free speech and open scientific debate. And expect the state and large corporations to dictate how you live your life for the foreseeable future. 
I'm worried about climate change, absolutely. Millions are already suffering and many more will. And we must act globally to preserve planet Earth. But with their ridiculous red weather maps and their manipulative climate hysteria, most of the dangerous hot air at the moment is coming from your TV set. So where's that off switch?